Today we'll be learning how to paint bokeh, a light effect in photography that happens when the subject matter is out of focus. We'll use this royalty-free photo as reference, but we won't copy it entirely. Check out the description below to find out more about this image. Welcome to Acrylic Arts Academy, we teach the world to paint. In addition to the standard supplies needed for painting, we'll use an 8x10 canvas, a 3 quarter inch flat brush, circular stamp brushes, a 3 quarter inch mop brush, a small flat brush, and a small round brush. The colors required for this piece are black, white, cerulean blue, ultramarine, turquoise blue, naples yellow red, carmine, and pural red. We used Salvador and Montmartre paints, though you can use equivalent colors in whatever type of paint you have. See more info about these paints in the description below. To get the bokeh effect correct, you'll also need gel mediums to mix in with your paints. Mediums like this work well. Be sure to pay attention to the finish. To begin, place your 8x10 canvas into the landscape position. You'll also need a 3 quarter inch flat brush as shown here, though something larger or smaller will do. Grab some cerulean blue and begin to apply it to the center portion of the canvas. Do not fret over perfection. Much of this will be blended in shortly. Use crisscross brush strokes to apply this color across the entire canvas in the central portion. It's okay if this patch looks sort of wavy. Next, get out some black paint. We'll be applying the black paint to the bottom of the canvas and slowly work upward towards the blue paint. There's no need to clean your brush, but you can if you wish. Let's add some gray paint or even just a touch of white and apply it to the canvas in between the blue and the black. Keep using side to side brush strokes to blend these colors at the seams while they're still wet. It's okay if the paint looks splashy and not blended just yet. Now we'll give the same treatment to the top portion of the canvas. This part goes rather quickly, so do your best to keep up or simply pause the video if you'd like to have more time. Don't worry too much about getting everything looking perfectly smooth. We will get there. As you work, keep blending the paint inward. It will end up looking like there's a blue oval in the middle, which is great for our purposes. Be sure to clean your paintbrush before moving on to the next step. Now we'll use the same brush to finally paint over the middle. All these colors will mix together so this will look like a blue tinted gray color towards the center. Now 
Trust the process, you're doing great. If needed, scoop up some more black and add it to the outer aspects of the canvas. Use X-shaped brush strokes as you work and blend these colors together. Painting the sides of the canvas will help the overall look. You'll be glad you did when you're ready to display this work on a wall. Before this paint dries, let's get out the 3 quarter inch mop brush. Use this fluffy brush to blend out these paints to a smooth gradient. Just swish the paintbrush lightly over the canvas starting with the lightest color. As you move the brush over the canvas, check out how quickly it blends things all together. Pretty great, right? Nice work. Let your painting dry completely before moving on. If you are in a hurry to keep on painting, use a fan or a hairdryer on the low or no heat setting to help the process along. Pause the video for now and come on back once your paint is dry. Now that your paint is dry, let's move on to the next steps. You'll need a circle sponge brush. The set we're using has three different sizes available, but if you have one size, it'll be okay. Let's use primary cyan, sometimes called cerulean blue, and oxide black. Mix two parts blue to one part black in a ratio like the one seen here. Use the sponge brush to apply this color to parts of the center of your canvas. Follow our lead. Because the nature of bokeh is an out of focus image, we're creating these swatches of color to be blurry aspects in the background. Let's mix more primary cyan, the light blue color, into the shade of color we previously mixed. We will apply this paint again in certain spots to make the blurred color pop a little more. Add two spots as shown, one smaller and one larger. Perfection is not required. As we did before, we'll utilize a clean 3 quarter inch mop brush to blend this gradient slightly. It's okay to keep this looking a little more undone. This is just one aspect of the painting and it'll fade into the background. Let's use Azo Yellow Medium and Purell Red next. Mix equal parts of both colors and add a dash of black to the mix. The result will be a dark yellow ochre color, which we'll be applying using a circular sponge brush below the blue bits that we just added. Again, just follow our lead. 
We'll also be utilizing the 3 quarter inch mop brush to gently blend this color in and soften it. If your brush is wet from washing it, use a paper towel or rag to work some of the moisture from the bristles. Now we'll work with ultramarine blue and one of the circular stamps. Get plenty of paint on the sponge brush and choose a spot to lay down a circle. As you press down lightly, swirl the brush in your fingers so it spins in place. Gather more paint and add another circle using this color to the right of the first one. Let's get into how we'll create the bokeh effect. Get out turquoise blue and your chosen gel medium. Mix a small amount of paint with plenty of gel medium and marry them well. The idea here is that we'll create some circles that are transparent to certain degrees. When the color is mixed, use a clean circular stamp brush to pick up plenty of paint. Follow our lead to add this color in a few spots. Remember to use even and gentle pressure to the sponge while twisting it in place. There will be a spot or two where you can smear the color around like we did in the background. This will dry somewhat transparently and the background work will show through slightly. Mix some white paint into the color you just used to create a light blue. Use a smaller circular stamp brush or the same one to add a few circles. Remember to stamp and twist the sponge in place. We will eventually smooth this paint out with a flat brush before it dries. If you want to pause the video and do that now, it's quite alright. Let's clean off any paint brushes you used and switch to Naples Yellow Red, which really looks like a creamsicle color or simply light salmon. Do the same technique where you mix a small amount of this color with plenty of gel medium so it will dry transparently. Again, use the circular sponge brush to apply a small sphere of transparent color. Follow our lead. If the color looks too transparent, use a flat brush to add a bit more paint and smooth things out. You can also use a flat brush to add an oval or two that seems like they're behind the other circles. Some of the photo effect in the reference image shows ovals rather than circles, so don't worry about it looking perfect. Now is a good time to use a smaller flat brush and add a bit more color where needed and smooth out any circles that may need it. Take your time. It will require a bit of time and patience to carefully smooth this paint out and all the colors you just utilized. Enjoy the process of spreading some paint around and making each of these spheres look nice and smooth before they dry. If an area feels empty, add some freestyle ovals or circular shapes using any shade of paint you mixed previously. Take a few more moments to smooth things over or make specific colors bolder with another application of paint. It's good to know that some of the transparent forms in the reference photo have a slight halo of brighter color around them. If you wish, use a bit of blue paint without the medium mixed in to create a bright outline around the blue circles. Use Naples Yellow Red without mixing it into the medium to outline the light salmon colored circles. 
Use a detailer brush to do so. It will be much easier to add these fine lines. Mix a bunch of gel medium into some carmine, which is medium red. Add a few pops of this color in a similar fashion. Well, I guess we flipped the canvas. It'll still look nice. Let's keep moving. Mix these two colors together to create a nice red-orange shade. And mix in a small amount of gel medium. The color will be bolder. Stamp and twist a few circles using this color. If needed, use a small round or flat brush to smooth out any markings left from the sponge. Let's again mix some light blue from two to three parts of white paint and one part blue. Add just a little gel medium to the mix. Add some circles in this color around the canvas. The placement doesn't matter very much as long as all the forms are somewhat grouped together. Go back and use some of your Naples Yellow Red, which is a salmon color, and add more paint to the mix to make it less see-through and bolder. Stamp and twist a few spheres along the group using this color. Make sure they overlap another circle just slightly. Use some of the remainder of the shade to outline one or two of the more transparent circles or ovals. A detailer brush will be helpful. As we have before, use a smaller brush to smooth out the texture of the paint before it dries. At this point, add another layer of color anywhere it might be needed. Take your time and add as many details as you like so that you're pleased with the look of the painting. And that's how you create a bokeh effect for an acrylic painting. This technique can be scaled up or down according to your needs. Take what you learned today and make some beautiful art. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed this free tutorial, please consider donating to Acrylic Arts Academy. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up button to like this video. Continue your acrylic painting journey by taking one of our free courses at acrylicartsacademy.com slash free courses. See you next time.